We have chapter 12, One Voice, William Wilberforce. Make sure you are doing your questions with this one as you're listening. Negotiation. Because of the war with France, the price of sugar is half what it was a few years back. Desperate plantation owners floated the idea of a five-year halt on the slave trade, thinking that the labor shortage would slow sugar production, driving down the supply and stabilizing the price. The agreement was no new bills during negotiation. So I said nothing in 1800, nor in 1801, but in the end, no settlement. And since no bill, still no change. Pitt resigns. When Ireland joined Great Britain, Pitt promised Catholics could be part of Parliament. King George III disagreed. Pitt resigned. Nine Years at War with France by William Wilberforce. We've been at war with France in 1793, but at last we have a treaty signed at Amiens on March 25, 1802. The chaos surrounding the cessation of hostilities prevented me from proposing a bill. So the chaos surrounding the ending of the war prevented me from proposing a bill, but my efforts toward abolition have not ended. This year, my sights were set on the enslaved of France, or rather the formerly enslaved, as all the enslaved in the French colonies were declared free after the death of the French king. Remember, they were trying to get rid of all the rich people in France, and so they just let all the slaves go. Now Napoleon, from France, tries to reintroduce slavery into the Caribbean. I warned the prime minister that the treaty should clearly state no new slaves in French territory. This warning fell on deaf ears, another defeat. Home life. Though politically not all goes as I wish, I enjoy a happiness at home beyond what could have been possibly conceived. No bill again in 1803. My good intention to propose a bill early enough to discuss was defeated by illness, then public danger, as Britain and France are again at war. The king was unimpressed with his replacement prime minister. So Pitt is back. May 30th, 1804. 20 days ago, Pitt was reappointed. Today, the new Irish members of parliament helped to turn the vote. My anti-slave trade bill passed the House of Commons 124 to 49 after 14 years and without the word gradually. 14 years is a long time to wait. House of Lords, four dukes opposed abolition. Final vote against, maybe next year. So it didn't go through the House of Lords still again. Shift. With Pitt as Prime Minister and war on hold, perhaps it's time for one more massive fight. I've asked Thomas Clarkson to return. 10 years later, he's ready to ride again, spreading the word of the horrors of slavery, of the need for abolition. I'm thankful for him. Delighted by, and this is by a visitor. We were looking for a misplaced report, almost frantic, when from the nursery came a clamor. I braced myself for an explosion, but instead Wilberforce paused and with a delighted smile remark, remarked, only think what a relief amidst other hurries to hear their voices and know they are well. So just saying like, he's got children in there and they're happy and isn't that really great. Bill to abolish the slave trade, 1805 rejected, vote of 70 to 77. Where did last year's votes go? So this time he's in the House of Commons and the year before it had been, um, what was it? Um, the year before he won it What did they say? They won it. I just read it. One twenty four forty nine, and this time they lost seventy to seventy seven. At the end of the year, bereft William Wilberforce. At the end of the year, we knew Pitt was ill, only forty six and failing fast. For personal purity, disinterestedness, and love of his country, I have never known his equal. January 23, 1806, rests in peace. Oh, his buddy Pitt died. The third William. 19 years ago, I asked Pitt about my involvement with abolition with his cousin Grenville there. Now Grenville is to be prime minister. I thank God for this grace. This one's called joint rule. William Grenville, prime minister and first lord of the treasury. Charles Fox, secretary of state for foreign affairs, working together and both for abolition. A novel idea by William Wilberforce. In March 1806, a mere half hour before I presented again my annual anti-slavery bill, 
James Stephen, St. Kitt's lawyer, suggested a new tact tactic. Napoleon tries to reintroduce slavery into French colonies, but British plantation owners don't want that. More enslaved Africans for France means more competition for the British. French products drive down the price. If we prevent British ships from supplying humans to foreign territories like France, plantation owners are happy because Britain hurts French interests. Always good, but especially in wartime. The slave trade worldwide starts to contract as it is British ships doing most of the sailing and parliament will have for the first time restricted the slave trade. All right, this is called, sorry, I keep getting this like fly on me. Cloaking maneuver by William Wilberforce to obscure our real intentions. So cloaking is kind of like to be a little deceptive. Sir Arthur Leary Pigott introduced the foreign slave trade abolition bill. I showed little attention to it. By the end of May, 1806, it was law, our first bit of success. A resolution by Charles Fox. This house conceiving the African slave trade to be contrary to the principles of justice, humanity, and sound policy will with all practical expedition proceed to take effectual measures for abolishing the said trade. House of Commons approved. House of Lords approved. Diary by William Wilberforce. If it please God to spare the health of Fox and to keep him and Grenville together, I hope we shall next year see the termination of all our labors. Three weeks later, Fox is dead. Oh my goodness, Fox dies. Make the most of every opportunity, William Grenville. I may not be prime minister for long, so I use the summer recess to travel from Lord to Lord, Lord urging them to vote for abolition. By summer's end, I have 70 peers in support. Can you imagine just traveling? I mean, everywhere you go to a person's house could take you days by carriage. And you're just traveling person to person to person trying to gather their support for this. A New Strategy by William Wilberforce. The House of Commons has occasionally passed the anti-trade bill. The House of Lords has never. So we'll try something new. Grenville will present the bill to the Lords. Should it pass, the House of Commons next will vote. That Old Argument by William Wilberforce. Remember how all assume that if British ships don't trade, other countries will? Untrue. With British, strips, strip, with British ships restricted, Denmark banned the slave trade back in 1803. The United States is banning the slave trade. France is blockaded and can't trade. Spain is blockaded and can't trade. Portugal lacks the means to scale up the trade. By restri restricting British ships, we have made a real difference in the world. January 2, 1807. I watched from the gallery as Grenville proposed the House to the House of Lords a bill for abolition of the slave trade. The Duke of Clarence delays debates for a month, and so we wait. Slave Trade Act, House of Lords, February 5, 1807, passed, 100 to 36. A tribute by Sir Samuel Romilly. When I look at the man at the head of the French monarchy, surrounded as he is with all the pomp of power and all the pride of victory, distributing kingdoms to his family and principalities to his followers, seeming as he sits upon his throne to have reached the summit of human ambition, the pinnacle of earthly happiness. And when I follow him into his closet or to his bed and contemplate the anguish with which his solitude must be tortured by recollections of the blood he has spilt and the oppressions he has committed, and when I compare with these pangs of remorse, the feelings which must accompany my honorable friend from this house to his home after the vote of this night shall have accomplished the object of his humane and unceasing labors, when he shall retire into the bosom of his delighted and happy family, and when he shall lay himself down on his bed, reflecting on the innumerable voices that will be raised in every quarter of the world to bless his name, how much more enviable his lot in the consciousness of having persevered so many millions of his fellow creatures than that of the man with whom I have compared him on a throne to which he has waited through slaughter and oppression. So he's comparing Wil Wilberforce to the French monarch and what an amazing job he did. Slave Trade Act, House of Commons, 283 to 16, February 23, 1807. Success by William Wilberforce. When the bill passed, the whole of Parliament rose to their feet in an unprecedented outburst of emotion, applauding, 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 as I sat 
sat hands, head in hands, weeping, astonished. William Wilberforce, I cannot account for the fervor which has suddenly attached itself to this subject, except by supposing it has been produced by the almighty power which can influence the judgments and affections of man. For such a time as this, William Wilberforce, Grenville resigned after one year. One year in the end was enough. That's the end of chapter 12, but I left my questions inside the house. So I'm going to quickly go in here and pull them out so I can double check the questions with you for chapter 12. So give me a second because this will be the end of your worksheet now. Let me pull these out, chapter 12. Um, okay, so how many years um, did it take? Um, how many years did it take for any of Wilberforce's bills to pass? And did that first one make a difference? So that's the first question there. Um, yeah. And the answer for that question, did you catch it? Did anybody catch it? It was 14 years. But in the end, it made no difference because the House of Lords still did not pass it. What was the foreign slave trade abolition bill and why did it pass? So this is a little hard to understand. So if you didn't get this all written down, it's okay. But I'm going to read you this and then we'll summarize it, okay? British ships were restricted from trading humans to foreign countries like France. Plantation owners liked that because that meant there were, was less competition from foreign plantation owners. But also the slave market actually begins to shrink and Parliament restricted the trade for the first time. So what you should just understand is that the, the slave trade was restricted for the first time. It's a little challenging to understand all that, and I think that's okay. So what did William Grenville do during summer recess? Recess, remember I said that out there, right? What did he do in his carriage? Traveled around from, from lord to lord trying to get support. With British ships not trading with foreign nations, did other nations take their place? And the answer was no, as you saw, because Denmark didn't trade, nor did the U.S. France and Spain, Spain could not trade. Portugal was too weak to increase the trade, and the restrict, so the restriction made a real difference. That's what you can say. The restriction made a real difference. The Slave Trade Act had never passed the House of Lords before, but in 1807, Prime Minister Grenville proposed the bill, and it passed by 100, 136, which is about three yeses to every one no. And summarize what Sir Samuel Romilly met in his tribute to Wilberforce. So that long tribute that he wrote, I'm gonna summarize this, I'm gonna read this, and then you see if you can summarize what he was saying. Napoleon might look like he has a great life with all his power and ability to give wealth to his favorites. But when he is alone, he must just be filled with guilt. What a horrible conscience to have to just kill people and do that. On the other hand, we have Wilberforce, who has worked tirelessly to stop the slave trade. When he goes home, he'll sleep in peace, surrounded by a loving family, being thanked by people around the world who no longer have to live in fear of their lives. He has a better life, a far more enviable life. So see if you can summarize that, what Sir Samuel Romilly is saying, right? What is he saying? How is he comparing Napoleon to Wilberforce? What was the astonishing vote in the House of Commons that passed the Slave Trade Act? The answer was 283 to 16, 17 to 1, and in a vote, in a vote that had never even barely gone 50-50. And, and that's why Wilberforce said this just had to be an act of God. He couldn't believe it. And Grenville was prime minister for how long? I said that at the end of the video. So if you didn't catch it, rewind it. How long was Grenville um, prime minister? Because it was just long enough.